A simple train ride, the routine of a daily job everyone is somewhat familiar with. Never changing, always the same, but just a little deviation can change everything. It's always interesting when a game brings up questions. Like the nature of AI, or how simply starting a conversation can lead to a world of change. Subservice Circular is a simple game. You are a tech detective, basically a self-aware AI robot. The whole game takes place in an underground train. All you can do is start conversation with other techs while you sit in one spot for the whole game. The only aspect that really changes are the techs that you talk with. The conversations can be about small things like personal problems or opinions, or larger concepts like the nature of life and where humans and technology fit in together in this world. This is all shown through very simple gameplay. You use your mouse, click on the tech you want to talk to, and you start a conversation. Be ready for a lot of reading though. Some conversations can easily go on for minutes with walls of text to read. As none of the dialogue is spoken, reading is all you do. And well, the soundtrack is really good and the ambient sound really helps to set a great atmosphere, you are still reading paragraph after paragraph of information. The script is very well written, it's a joy to read the conversations and see the little differences in personality in every tech you meet, but it's still just so much reading. The dialogue is visualized like a text conversation. You basically link up with other techs in a private chat room to talk. It feels similar to the idea of being able to talk with everyone on your phone in the same room. A concept I would love to try out once, just to see how us humans would actually react to so much conversation possibilities. This mechanic however, does give some slight disconnect with the world. Even if it's used for a lot of interesting puzzles, like that you have to switch between two techs who are connected with each other in some matter to get the right responses, it always feels like you enter a separate room with other techs, and you kind of leave the main area. But a simple game like this is nothing without good presentation, and the game definitely has that. The creators used a very simple art style with bright colors. All techs have very angular shapes with not too much detail. Yet they all retain a very distinct silhouette that conveys their function in society. The visuals do get repetitive over time. Many of the texts start to look very similar at the end. And you always look at the same subway. And that actually factors into another problem I have with this game. You are told of a whole world where humans and techs live together, but you are only told about this. I understand seeing the main game design philosophy, but it does feel like a wasted potential seeing the setting of the game. It would be amazing to see just how the civilization functions, to interact with humans and see how they correspond to you being attacked. 
This could truly elevate this game to a much higher level and aid in the end decision you're making in the story itself. The story does start out really simple. You were just sitting in a train car following your daily routine and suddenly a tech starts talking to you. He knows you're a detective and asks you to help find his friend and look into recent disappearances. From here you start getting into conversations with random techs, asking many questions to gain as much information as possible about this case. In this first conversation however, many of the central themes about intelligence are already brought up. The tech that talks to you notes how you as a detective are a high level tech, which basically means you are extremely intelligent, almost to the level of being human. This is also a very important point that comes back later in the story. As you continue in the game, you learn more about how the world works. How the techs and humans interact with each other on a daily basis. You hear stories about how techs get attacked by people and how humans can be fearful of you. You also learn that in the society you live in, techs recently have gotten their freedom. While they still operate as servants under management, the local authorities. And the way how techs are implemented in society makes people fearful of being replaced. Techs have taken over many lower level jobs and many people lose their livelihood. This in turn has led to the creation of certain political parties that wish to see more people used in the workforce than tax. They basically see the tax as a threat to their livelihood and because of that they are also the people that are becoming more violent towards tax themselves. One of the more interesting conversations you have in this game though is with a tech priest. In this universe the techs have their own religion and funny enough it's based on the game Thomas Was Alone made by the same developers. In universe canon Thomas was basically the first sentient AI and that whole game is about the AI itself becoming sentient. This basically means that the game Subserver Circular is technically a sequel to Thomas Was Alone, or at least a spin-off. And for me personally, that makes this game so much more interesting, seeing how Thomas Was Alone is one of my favorite platformers of all time. All of these conversations are a build-up to the climax of the game. In the last chapter, you meet Red, a tag that came up multiple times during conversations earlier in the game. And it turned out to be the tag you first spoke with. The one who asked you to help find his friend. He tells you that he is helping a rebel revolutionary faction that wishes to overthrow the management and put tax into control of the city. They see that high level tax with high intelligence would be much better to run the society and just leave the normal jobs to the people to make sure that people have a place in the future. Red however did start to have some doubts about this revolution and he wanted the opinion of a high level tech, you. Because of that he sent you on this wild goose chase so that you could find out how the society works so you could decide for him what was the right option. Because of that, at the end you have to choose between shooting yourself or shooting Red. Because only one of you can leave the train. If you are the one to leave, management will find out by your memory implant and because of that the revolution will be shut down. But, if Red leaves, the revolution will continue and the whole status quo will change. What the ending basically boils down to is what you think should happen. Should technology take over the government or should technology take over our jobs? Even though I do really like this game, I do think it's a bit too short. I completed it under 2 hours and I was longing for more. As I said before, the visuals do get repetitive, but if there was some form of scenery change, like once every hour, I could play this game for at least 12 hours. But because it's so short, also the whole lead up to the climax feels a bit rushed. But seeing the circumstances of the game, I do get it. It's an indie game with probably a pretty low budget made by a small team, and the fidelity of the game itself is actually pretty high. But I wish there was so much more to this. I really enjoy the world, I enjoy the concepts, I enjoy the questions that it asks. But from my perspective I don't really get a full conclusion to everything. The game just kinda stops too short. 
all in all, I do truly recommend this game. It has an interesting concept, it has decent execution, the soundtrack is cool, the story itself is pretty interesting with the concepts it brings up. And it's only around 6 bucks on Steam, so why not give it a try? Anyway, I'm the Quant. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, whatever the fuck the YouTube wants you to do these days with this kind of videos, and thanks for watching.